changing the travel on a RockShox fork is surprisingly easy. In this video, I'll be giving step-by-step -step instructions with clear visuals on how to swap an air spring on a RockShox fork. I'll be changing the travel on my RockShox Pike from 140mm to 160mm. However, the process is the same for most Lyric, Revelation, Yari, and Zeb forks. To find out if this process will work for your model and year of fork, check the RockShox service manual in the video description. For my Pike, I'll be using this particular air spring. Check the RockShox service manual to find the correct air spring for your specific fork. For this upgrade, we'll need to buy some lubricants and fluids. The service manual gives us a few options, but I decided to go with Maxima Plush Dynamic Suspension Lube Heavy, RockShox 0W30 Suspension Oil, and Shram Butter. We'll also need a few other items that you may or may not have on hand. I put a checklist with everything you'll need down in the video description to make these items easy to acquire. To work on the fork, we're going to need to take the fork off the bike and clamp the steer of the fork into a bike stand. To start the process of swapping the air spring, we'll first have to remove the air valve cap and depress all of the air out of the fork. Next, we'll undo the bolt on the side of the rebound adjuster knob with a 2.5mm allen key and pull off the rebound adjuster knob. With a 5mm allen key, we will loosen the bottom bolts on each leg of the fork a few turns, but will not remove the bolts completely. The service manual suggests about 3-4 to four turns per bolt. Next, we'll need to place our oil pan or trash can under the fork and put on some safety goggles and gloves. But before you put on your gloves, hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Once our splash zone is set up, we will place a 5mm Allen key back into one of the bolt heads and give it a few firm whacks. Do the same thing to the bolt on the other leg. This should dislodge the lowers and allow us to pull them off. Then remove the bolts on both sides. Pull evenly and confidently and be prepared for oil to come out. Set the lowers aside for later. Next step is to remove the top cap on the air side of the fork. Depending on what year and model of fork you have, you will either need a 24mm socket or a cassette tool. Remove the top cap and place the top cap aside for later. Next we will need to grab our snap ring pliers to remove the retaining ring that holds the air spring in place. Pinch the eyelets together and carefully pull the ring out of the inside of the stanchion. I highly suggest wearing safety goggles for this step in case the retaining ring decides to go flying at your face. The snap ring pliers are a bit of a specialty tool, but they are the right tool for this job. I was thinking of not buying them and just trying to use needle nose pliers, but after trying this I was super thankful I sprung for the snap ring pliers. Now we just grab a hold of the air spring and yank it out. I was struggling to get a good grip, so I put a 5mm bolt back in the bottom of the air spring to give me more to grab onto. Dang, dude. This piece is stuck. I ended up dousing my walls with lubricant when it finally popped out. <laughs> what the heck, man? That was quite an explosion. The next step is cleaning all the parts. We're going to want some isopropyl alcohol, some shop towels, and a long narrow non-marring stick to poke up into the inside of the stanchions to clean them out. I got this wooden stick from the hardware store. It won't scratch the inside of the stanchions and we'll use it again in a minute for a different job. While you've got the isopropyl and shop towels in hand, we might as well just clean everything. The stanchions inside and out, the lowers, dirty bolts, rebound knob, etc. Now that our stanchions are clean, we're going to re-grease the inside of the air spring side stanchion with Shram Butter. We only want to grease 150mm up from the bottom of the stanchion. The easiest way to do that is measure 150mm on your wooden stick and coat that portion of the stick with Shram Butter. And then swab the inside of the stanchion. Next we're going to prep the o-rings on the piston and seal head with some Shram Butter as well. We're also going to put a tiny bit of Maxima Plush Heavy on the spring shaft. No specific amount, just enough to make it slick. Once everything's lubed up, we're going to pop the new air spring into the stanchion. If the air spring doesn't sit far enough in to get the retaining ring in place, use something non-marring to push it the rest of the way in. Carefully replace the retaining ring, making sure that the sharper edge of the ring is facing down so it can engage with the perch on the inside of the stanchion. 
Next, we'll need to squirt a little bit of the Maxima Plush Dynamic Suspension Lube Heavy into the top of the air spring side. Just three milliliters in there and we're good to go. Before we screw in the top cap, we need to decide how many bottomless tokens we want to install. There's a maximum number of bottomless tokens you can run depending on the year, model, and travel. So we gotta consult the service manual. The max number of tokens for my particular fork with a 160 millimeter air spring is four. I ended up going with three. If you wanna add tokens, use a eight millimeter Allen key and torque the tokens to four Newton meters. Once you got your tokens torqued up, torque the top cap to 28 Newton meters. We cleaned the lowers and the dust wiper seals looked pretty good, so we're just gonna apply some SRAM butter to them and slide them back on the uppers. Make sure you don't crush the dust wiper seals or put the lowers on backwards. It can be a bit tricky, so take your time getting these on. Remember to breathe, you're almost done. Once the lowers are on, don't push them all the way into the spring and the damper. You'll want to leave about an inch or so of space to inject the oil into the bolt holes. It helps to position the fork at an angle with the bolt holes oriented upward. We'll inject the bolt holes with RockShox Zero W30 regardless of which model and year fork we have. However, the volume of oil will depend on the model and year of the fork. Check the service manual for that information. Mine called for 10 milliliters of RockShox 0W30 in each leg. Now we just slide the lowers down the stanchions until they meet with the spring and damper. Clean excess oil coming from the lower leg bolt holes and reinstall the bolts. Make sure to install the bolts on the correct sides. The air spring side bolt is usually black and does not have a spot to screw on the rebound adjuster knob. The damper side bolt is usually red or silver and has a place to thread on the rebound adjuster knob. Use a torque wrench with a 5mm hex bit socket to tighten the bolts to 7.3 newton meters. Next, install the rebound adjuster knob. Tighten the set screw to 0.9 newton meters or about as much as a hamster can bench press. Last but not least, our forks are going to need some air. Don't forget that the RockShox suggested air pressure listed on your fork won't be a good starting point for setting sag anymore. You're aiming for sag to sit around 20% of the new travel, give or take. Save this video if you're planning to change the travel on your fork. It's helpful to have a step-by-step -step video like this to follow along with. If I've encouraged you to try swapping your air spring or helped you complete this project, do me a solid and like the video. This is one of our many how-to videos on this channel and we're making new ones all the time. If you would benefit from videos like this, be sure to subscribe. I'm Nick and you're watching Nick and Katie. Thanks for watching.